So welcome back to Angular 20 tutorial. This is the sixth episode. In this episode, we are going to discuss how do we install the bootstrap and basically routing we have to discuss. So before routing, we are going to need that navigation bar. So that's why bootstrap installation is also mandatory. So till now what we have done. So we started with basic setup, then we have seen component, then we have seen data binding, what is data binding, then we have seen signal also, like what is signal? Now moving ahead again, so sorry, control plus statement is also done. So now moving ahead, we are going to see routing. So you know, like Angular is a single page application. Now, if it's a single page application, only one index.html page is going to render. But we should have a look and feel like from one page, we are going to navigate to another page. Again, we are able to navigate to some different page, just like how we get the look and feel of the multiple page based navigation where we have physical pages like in HTML from one particular file, you navigate to different particular file, correct? So that navigation and field, we have to get it into Angular. So we have routing library for that. So again, if you talk about Next.js, uh, React.js, everywhere you can see the routing. Okay, in Vue.js also we have the routing. Just like that, in Angular also we have the routing. Now, when it comes to routing, it's not some extra package you need to install. By default, when you create the Angular project, routing is already included in that might be possible in again some version they might re uh, remove it by default and if you need it then only you have to install it but for now we have it by default available in your angular project so first before starting the routing we have to install the bootstrap and we have to register that into our angular.json then we will start with the routing now let me just close everything so this is the existing project we have created, right? So when uh, in the first episode, I have explained package.json, what is the use of package.json, package right? So if you remember package.json contain all the entries of the packages, what we are going to use in our Angular project, dependencies and dev dependencies, right? Again, what the difference between dev, I will cover in, uh, at the end of the series. But now, as I said, whatever the libraries, external libraries, you are going to use in your angular project that you need to register over here so now if i'm going to use bootstrap so i need to register that over here so but that will be automatically done how first let's open the npm npm now i'm going to install the bootstrap so let's search bootstrap so in the first episode i have already explained what's the purpose of bootstrap why bootstrap is uh, sorry or npm why npm is so much important and how what's the purpose of npm because this is also interview question if you are having two to three year, years of experience now they will ask you like what is npm what's the use of this platform also right now so this is the command so latest version is 5.3.6 this is the command npm i bootstrap i stands for install so this is my command let's copy it now this bootstrap i need to install in my angular project so let's open a new terminal so let's open a new terminal, click on plus. On the root level, we need to install this command. See, npm i bootstrap. So this i stands for install. So now just pay attention over here. Currently in dependencies, we don't have bootstrap. Okay. Now once I install it, it will, now it is finding the particular package and it is installing. So see, 19 number entry got added. So whenever you install any package by the command, that entry that package name and the version which you are going to use that gets added over here that's what i said package.json will contain all the entries of the packages whatever you are going to use bootstrap ag grid prime ng material whatever the external libraries which you are going to use all will be added over here after the installation fine now we have installed the bootstrap so where it where we have got it so if you check the node module see here we got the bootstrap, bootstrap, dist, CSS, and then we will have bootstrap non min.css. Fine. So now this bootstrap non min.css, you need to add it into our package.json. Sorry, angular.json. Remember, like if you know basic HTML file, uh, let's say you have a basic HTML. So how do you, uh, just a minute, let me clear my memory a little bit. So, in normal HTML file also, let's say you have in, you have downloaded the bootstrap file, you add a reference to that in your head tag or if you are using a CDN, CDN also, you used to add that. So after installing the bootstrap also, you need to, in which page you are going to use. So you need to add that. Just like that, once you install the bootstrap, 
in angular.json you need to add the entry of the file so that you can use the classes from bootstrap over all the applications so here you can see in angular.json you got the style array inside that you need to add whatever the path was there na? so that path only in node module bootstrap days css bootstrap main.css so this is the path you need to add it over here and one more thing your style.css should be at the end this this should be your last element there is a reason for that i will explain after once we are done with the basic topic okay now whenever you do some changes into angular.json you need to again compile your application fine let me just close everything ng s either you write so or yes both are same thing so whenever you make changes to your angular.json again you need to compile your angular application fine now let's try application is running so by default over that uh, what was the component control flow statement component is there let's try bootstrap classes are working so we have this button let's say in bootstrap we have class that is btn btn typhon success so if bootstrap is properly installed we should be able to see the color yeah so see bootstrap is properly installed and we are able to use it now so this is what about the installing bootstrap. You install the bootstrap and you add the entries of that particular CSS into your angular.json. Next is routing. So what is routing now? So till now you can see what we are doing, how we are rendering the component. We create the component and in our app.component, app we are rendering the component by using its selector. We, we cannot keep on doing like this, right? All those components, whatever the components we have created, we should there should be a nav bar on click of the particular link, we should be able to navigate to that particular component. That look and feel you should have, right? So to achieve that, what you need to do, you need to import, you need to create the routing. Routing package is already there. I have shown you, right? In package.json, routing is already there. Now, first of all, when you create the project, you get this app route.ts. So this is a file where you are going to create your route. And this array, see, it's just a constant file. In previous version, this used to be a module, but now it's just a constant file. So this route array you are using into our, where it is app config here. See, we are accessing this particular file and whatever the routes we have created that we are injecting over here in the pro router provider. Okay. So here you have to create the routes. Now what is route? Route is nothing but an object. Means whatever the components you have that component you need to create the route that component you want to access by using url so for that you will create the route fine so as i said route is nothing but an object so this is an array of data type route so if i create curly bracket see some properties it is suggesting it is suggesting these properties because we have specified the data type over here routes it contains the object of route array of route okay now First parameter is my path. Path is nothing but your URL. By what URL you are going to access your particular component. Let's say how many components we have created. Admin. So admin. Then component. If in the URL we have this URL. If let's say in the your uh, browser URL is the admin. Which component you want to open. So you need to import your admin component class name. See. Once I select this, import has been automatically added. This is your first round. Second path. Then we have control flow statement. Okay. This is my route name component. Control flow. Fine. Just like that, we keep on creating multiple route for the components we have created. For now, consider how many components you have created. You will create the routes of all the components. Again, once we go to the reusable component, then I will explain why do why we don't create the route of reusable component. We can create because it's a component, but we don't create. There is a slight difference with that. But for now, consider whatever the components you create, that many routes you will create. It will be easy for to, to process data binding. And this is your name. You can give it anything. See, here the name is something else, but let's say data binding. Like this also you can give component data binding. But here only class name should be there. Comma. Path. What's the path? Signal. Component. 
signal component. Fine. So we have created almost user only I have skipped. So whatever the components we have, we have created the routes of that. Now routes is there. Now we need the nav bar. So by default, our app component is there. App component is my parent component. So in app component, I will show the, I will add the nav bar. Let's visit the bootstrap site and let's get their nav bar. Nav bar. Why this site open? Bootstrap W3. Bootstrap 5. So here we have the nav bar. Fine. Let's get the nav bar, the black one. Write yourself. I need the black one. So this is the black one. So this is a simple nav bar. It's not required that you should have a nav bar. A simple anchor tag will also do the work. But I need it to be more uh, properly it should look. So that's why I'm getting the nav bar. If I save. See, nav bar is coming. Now, in normal HTML pages, whenever we have to navigate from one page to another, we use this href tab, href attribute for navigation on the anchor tag. But in Angular, we cannot use href. We can, but we don't use it because your page will load, reload. So instead of href, we have router link. Okay. For navigation, you have router link. So if you have to use router link, router link is a directive. Again, what are directive we are going to see. But for now, if you want to use router link in your app.component.as, you have to import router link. You import the router link. Then over here, instead of href, you will use router link equal to let's say admin. So what's our route name for the admin? Admin only, like this. So wherever we have href, let me just replace everywhere. Then second it will be, let's say control. Flow. What's the route name of the control flow? Control flow statement. This is the route name, let's copy. It will go over here. Then we have, data binding so let's copy this route name always try to copy paste if you make the spelling mistake you will get error data binding and last one was signal let's copy paste signal fine so see what we have done we have created the routes of the components we have created then we have added the nav bar in nav bar we are using router link but if you have to use router link you need to import it also into the same component fine let's save and check now so by default in the browser you don't have anything if i click on control flow see route is changing okay but our, our route is changing but component is not getting displayed so we need one more directive that is router link so after the nav bar after this you need router okay so if you have to use router outlet you need to import it whatever you are going to use you need to import it we are going to need router outlet. So let's import that. Then you will be able to suggest that. See. Okay. By adding router outlet, see what happens now. Currently, we are in the control flow statement. So see, UI is coming. If I click on admin, see, once my route is changing, my component is also getting rendered. Understood? So this is like Angular is a single page application, but now you are getting you are getting the look and feel like you are from one page, you are able to navigate to another page. Okay. So this is happening because of your routing. Fine. So whatever we have seen that we have almost covered. Again, this is very basic of the routing. Again, there are so many things. Okay. Like how do we navigate from dot tiers? How do you read the query parameter? Default route, wildcard route. How do you set the values in? How do you store the data into your route? Router active uh, route. How do you read the query parameter? Routing uh, route params dot subscribe. Router events are there. So many things are there. But I will first try to complete the basic thing. Then we will move to the advanced thing. Fine. Again, if you are new, please do like and subscribe. Uh, in the video description, you will be finding a link of my WhatsApp channel. You can join that. You can directly connect with me for any doubts or anything you have. Fine. So now again in the next episode, we will explore some more topics. Uh, first, we will complete the directives. Okay. Because directives are so much important in your Angular application. So for that's it for now. Thank you guys.